When I was younger, I used to love TV shows and movies like Avatar The Last Airbender, Star Wars, and Harry Potter, and I used to think, man, why can't real life be cool like that? Why can't I shoot fire out of my hands or make things move with my mind? Fast forward 10 years when I'm in college, and I realize we do have something like that in our world. It's called science. You see, in all those stories, these powers abided by certain rules, and there was a structure in place, a discipline that you had to master in order to use those powers. That's exactly what math is. These symbols, they tell you how to bend the universe. And if you're not the biggest fan of math, we have an entirely separate world for you to bend, the digital world that operates on a different set of rules. But the point of all this stuff, all this knowledge, is for you to use it, so you can tell the universe what you want it to do. And this is something even I didn't believe until I actually started doing it. Imagine how much more fun school would be if instead of this, it was like this. Going in every day with your friends, learning some cool looking symbols, and making stuff fly around the room. We have all this stuff. This is the promise of engineering. With technology nowadays, there is very little difference between science and magic. It's a totally different feeling to learn something with the attitude that it's worth it to learn, and you're actually going to use it in real life. Now, without a doubt, this stuff takes time and practice to master, so don't expect to be making things fly tomorrow. But here's the thing. The experience of learning engineering is different than the learning you may be familiar with. It's not memorizing history facts or frantically trying to rehearse your speech on the way to class. Consider this. If I asked you to narrate the plot of Star Wars, you probably could. You would start listing story arcs and character motivations, and even the tiny details like what colors the lasers were in this battle and such. How do you do that? The answer? Imagination. When you think of that movie, images, sounds, and feelings all surface in your brain, and it doesn't feel difficult to output. It's fluid. It's effortless. The key is to take that feeling and bring it over here. When most people look at this, they see just a bunch of letters and that's where the problem is. These things are not equations that you memorize. When I see this equation, I see its application. I see objects rotating, I see speeds, I see forces. I don't just see an object dropping, but how fast exactly. Engineering is the art of precision. It looks like nothing is happening with the circuit, but inside those wires you have the most incredibly complex symphony of electric fields, magnetic fields, things that make our technology work. Math is your guide in this realm, allowing you to see the unseeable. Simply put, these equations place the entire universe in your brain. And like any story, math and science follow a logical sequential progression. If you want to read Harry Potter, you don't start at the Order of the Phoenix. Likewise, if you want to learn engineering, you're not going to start with electronics. Once you really get what a limit is, only then can you truly understand what derivatives are. Each concept is used in the real world, and each is used in turn to help you learn more advanced topics. For example, we first learn sine, cosine, and tangent as describing the size of right triangles but they are also used in understanding radio signals and sound waves. Everything is connected. If you forget an equation or a concept, you can recreate it by starting at the prerequisites and working upwards. Engineering forms a regenerative, flexible knowledge framework that you continue to expand and build upon, and that can be used to solve almost any problem you encounter. Problems are great because you get to practice what you just learned. You think you get it, but do you actually get it? Can you use what you just learned? Just like sculpting, every problem you do will yield a continuously clearer picture of what that concept actually means, bit by bit removing the doubts and uncertainties from your mind. Not only that, you start realizing all the real-life scenarios you can use math in. You'll start seeing the world as a bunch of shapes and mathematical relationships that you can directly interact with. You'll start developing an intuition, 
an engineering sense for what feels right and what feels wrong. When you're first starting out, you'll do some problem and you'll feel for sure that you're going about it in the right way, but when you check the answer, it's incorrect. That's good. We as humans have two parts, a conscious logical part and a more unconscious emotional part. Learning engineering allows you to calibrate these two parts and put them in sync. So when you get that problem wrong, you'll think, I can't just charge forward with that feeling. I have to slow it down, check my concepts, and make 100% sure that I'm going about this in the right way. And practicing this exercise of self-reflection over and over again is going to turn you into a more thoughtful, insightful person. Never mind understanding all these equations, engineering is going to fine-tune the way you think and the way you look at the world. I know what it feels like for something to make sense. So when I'm reading some legal document or cell phone bill or interacting with the rest of the world in any way, I know when I'm being tricked. Something just doesn't feel right. The facts don't connect. The information isn't clicking together like I'm used to from my engineering training. Everything in my life, I now approach with my engineering mindset. And once you feel ready, you can take the next step and bring that mindset out into the real world. It's why I like robotics. You don't need any crazy machinery to test out all these theories that you have, these skills you've been building. Figure out what you think is cool and build it. The real world brings with it its own challenges. Things won't work out the way they're supposed to on the first try, and problems will mysteriously arise. Projects are never sprints, but marathons. Your motivation will be tested, and you'll have to apply your knowledge creatively to solve unexpected problems. Soon enough, you'll find yourself on a team. You're handling the mechanical design, your buddies on the circuits, and another guy's typing up the code. And you're all speaking the same language. You're all checking each other's works. You have each other's backs. It adds that whole camaraderie feeling to engineering. Each member of the team is an expert in their own element. And there's a trust there, a respect. And when you see your work coming to life in the real world, you experience this feeling of, I did that. This is what I can do with these powers. And that is a great feeling. Everything you learned, everything you practiced, was worth it. And then you come back and you want more. And that's the beauty of physics. Physics is the idea that all these different areas of science work off the same math, the same patterns. So if you understand these mathematical fundamentals, all aspects of reality that abide by that math become available to you. Electrons, forces, energy, all this stuff is just dead, emotionless stuff. It's you who uses it and gives it purpose. Math is just the idea that we understand and therefore we can control these things. It doesn't lie, it never shows up late for work, and it's true anywhere in the universe. And that's pretty powerful when you think about it. And it's even crazier to think that anyone can learn this anyone can climb this mountain. It looks a bit daunting at the higher levels, but all this stuff is based on simple operations. At the very bottom would be addition, and the next step, multiplication. But realize that multiplication isn't really a new concept. It's just a more elaborate, more advanced way to use addition. It should feel the exact same at the higher levels. Each new concept is a small step, a gentle extension from the previous. And if you climb this mountain at your own pace, if you go at it with the intention of truly learning, you'll find that the journey is a lot smoother than you thought. It's not about being smart. Who feels smart when they do addition? Smart is one of the most misleading words of today. Replace smart with focus, dedication, imagination, patience. There are no shortcuts in learning this stuff. No quick overnight experts. And there are so many empty promises out there on the internet, giving you these quick cheats for being good at something. And I always chuckle when I see them, because it just doesn't work in this world. Let me add one more word to this list. Honor. Build technology for the good of mankind. Not for money, not for fame. People who have the complete package are needed. Engineers are needed. Ones who use science and math to create technology to make the world a better place. When you take the oath of an engineer, 
you become part of an elite order of men and women who seek to harness the powers of our universe for the good of all of us. When you write an equation down, you are invoking history, taking part in this movement. They all in their own way fought against the elements, the political climate, competitors who sought to suppress their ideas, also they could send them forward for you to use. And that struggle continues to this day. This is the time to be an engineer. But whether or not you choose engineering as your career, that word education should mean something different. It's not just going to some school, learning some facts and then getting a job. That's not what education was meant to be. It's learning you. This is the most powerful thing in our known universe. Everyone's talking about artificial intelligence like it's some new thing. You already have one of those. And education is about learning how to use yours. Mixed martial arts master Conor McGregor sums it up perfectly. There's no talent here. This is hard work. This is an obsession. Talent does not exist. We are all equals as human beings. You could be anyone if you put in the time. You will reach the top, and that's that. I am not talented. I am obsessed. And that is the key to success. Not some sense of unattainable genius that some people just have and others don't. Passion and motivation allow you to work harder and achieve. This is your life. Eight hours for sleep, eight hours for your own time, and eight for work. This thing we call a career is literally half of your conscious life. So take the time now and ask the big questions. What do I enjoy? And what just pops out to me and strikes my interest? What you discover may surprise you. When I was a kid, I never liked building stuff. I never took things apart or even cared about how things were made. It was years later in college when I realized that I was good at this math, and then I started getting interested in robotics, and building, and all the different things you can do with engineering and technology. So my point is that you might develop an interest in the things that you are good at. So don't worry if you don't know what you're interested in or passionate about yet, but get out there, try different things, and see what you're good at. My advice to you in succeeding at this part of your life is finding the intersection between what you like and what you're good at. But in any case, this is your own journey. This is your story. You will discover the world in your own way, and I wish you the best of luck.